This PC right here is a first for me where I sold it over 18 months ago and the person essentially wants more performance. And so they wanted to trade it in for a higher end system I was selling. And I said, sure thing. And when they brought it in, they said they were extremely happy with the system, but they just want more power. So today I'm gonna to be critiquing myself on my own build that I did over 18 months ago and also see what has changed in this time frame between selling a PC right now and selling one 18 months ago. And we can already see here that the fan has had a bit of usage. It's uh, pretty dirty. So first things first, we're gonna clean this system out and then check out the temperatures. If you are sick and tired of making passwords only to forget them a few weeks later, then today's sponsor Dashlane is for you with the ability to store passwords on all different types of devices, laptops, smartphones, desktops, and MacBooks. This will mean that you can jump onto a new PC, put your master password in, and then from there, you can autofill all different types of username and passwords. Now, hold on a second. You're probably thinking, is Dashlane even safe? Dashlane stores all your passwords and usernames and encrypts them. So if there ever was a breach in privacy, then your passwords are still not going anywhere. And of course, I've saved the best till last, and that is you can use Dashlane completely free on your first device if you use the link in the description below. And if you decide you wanna to upgrade to a more premium option, then you can get 50% off using the link and the coupon code in the description below. So I'll put them down for you. Let's get back to the video. So the first thing we're doing here is cleaning out all the fan points with the data vac and cleaning it quite heavily. And the reason for that is, is that's where all the dust buildup is mainly going to be. Now, since this hasn't been cleaned out in over 18 months, we can see that some of the things like the fans here have dust just ingrained into the actual plastic itself. And so I do recommend if you can clean your PC out every say six months or less, that way the dust is gonna come off a lot easier as opposed to cleaning it every 18 months, like we're doing here, where the dust has sort of ingrained itself into the parts. But now that we've done all the dusting, we can then just go with the final phase, and that's a nice multi-purpose spray and clean all the ins and outs of this PC to give it that final touch. So we're now reinstalling Windows after cleaning this thing up and making it all look fresh and like new. But one thing you'll notice here is the power supply has no labels on it whatsoever. And so if you do come into a power supply like this, you're probably wondering how can you tell if it's a decent power supply? Because I don't know exactly what power supply this is. But since it's got thick gauging on the wires and it's got quite a few connectors as we can see with the cable management at the back of the case, we know this is at least a decent power supply. It's also got two eight pin PCIe connectors. So it'll power something like a GTX 1066 gigabyte, which is exactly what this card is here. And an i7 3770 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Absolutely fine. Now, another thing we're doing too is checking for the fans and seeing if any of them make any weird noises. And it's a good thing to see that none of these fans make any bad noises. So if you've got a fan that's making a really weird noise, you may wish to put some multi-purpose spray on it uh, see if that can fix it. If not, just replace it. But another thing is too, from here on in, we're gonna be testing out this thermal paste right here, the GD900. This stuff is really cheap. You can get it for like $5 for a massive tube of this stuff. And I was recommending this hard, and I still do recommend it a lot here on the channel. The one thing I'm curious to see is since we used this here 18 months ago, what are the temperatures gonna be like, say with this thermal paste 18 months later, versus say a tube of freshly paced MX4 on this CPU. Let's find out right now.
So we now finished testing the temperatures on both the GPU and the CPU. Now the GPU made the biggest difference where we saw that go from 80 degrees to 76 degrees and also go down with the auto fan speeds from 67% to 61%. So changing your GPU thermal paste will make quite a big difference even after 18 months of usage. But also with the GPU, that was the stock thermal paste since that was a new card that I put into that build, if I remember correctly. But here's the really good news, and that is after stress testing the repaste of MX4 on the CPU, we got the same temperature, 78 degrees, as the GD900 18 months later, which means that this AliExpress special, you're getting 30 grams of this stuff, and you're getting it for $5 shipped international. That's extremely good value for money for thermal paste. And comparing it against MX4, I mean, MX4, I think costs like $10 for an eight gram tube. You're getting around four times more thermal paste for half the price. So you're getting like eight times the value out of GD900. And as we can see right here, it's held the test of time. Uh, even though it's a non-overclock CPU, it's only drawing 50 watts of power. It still did impressive to keep delivering these temperatures exactly the same as brand new MX4 18 months later. Though for the final test, just an interesting comparison, I'm gonna load up Warzone and test the 1066 gigabyte versus the GTX 970, which we featured in yesterday's video. I'll put the link up for that up here and see what the FPS is on this particular game with a 1060 versus a 970. And since they're both using the i7 3770 and 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's an apples to apples comparison. And now we're finished up with all the testing on Warzone and I was surprised in this game because the 1066 gigabyte actually lost to the 970 and this was at normal settings. But the funny thing was on the 970, I noticed that the VRAM uh, utilization, the memory usage in yesterday's video, that was about 500 megabytes lower. So in my opinion, the picture did look slightly better on the 1060 than it did on the 970 and we got lower FPS as a consequence. Even though we set in the menu settings, the exact same settings as we did yesterday, we we're getting 92 average FPS with similar 1% and 0.1% lows versus the 97 on the GTX 970. So like I've been saying before, if you wanna go with an Nvidia graphics card and you just wanna play games and you can control the settings, then the GTX 970 is definitely a good buy where we pick this up for 150 Aussie dollars, whereas opposed to at the moment, a 1066 gigabyte is going to cost like 250 Aussie dollars, even though they're gonna get similar performance if you can control the settings. That means don't go putting the textures and loading up the anti-aliasing because that's gonna uh, require a whole lot more of VRAM than you actually have on the 970, where Nvidia kind of caps that with the drivers, at least from what I'm seeing here. Now, another thing is too, with the GD900, we were only using 50 watts on a non-overclock CPU. But since I'm guessing a lot of builders out there don't overclock their systems when they sell them, this uh, right here, the 30 gram tubes are absolutely amazing. Though do stay tuned because I will be doing another high-end comparison with something like a 2080 Ti that puts out a monstrous amount of heat uh, versus any other part here. And I will be testing that again with a thermal paste roundup conclusion. But this was the, probably the most happiest thing I've seen in a while was that this thermal paste right here, it came out of this video just performing so well for the money. Very good value for money. I'll put the link to this if you wanna get uh, some in the description below, but I'll also be ordering some more myself. So I've been using this stuff heaps and heaps, and I've still got like a third of a tube left. So it definitely lasts a long time. The last thing to talk about here with a system is that on a GPU, even a 1060, is not using up a whole lot of power, say versus a 1080 Ti. And this was only after 18 months of usage. So if you've got your graphics card and you've had it in your computer for a couple of years, you may wish to change the thermal paste over because as we saw with this stock paste out of the box, it did degrade over those 18 months. Even though it wasn't a huge amount, it was still four degrees and lower noise because we were getting 6% lower on the auto fan speeds. And now here's the final thing about this PC. 
I believe I sold this for around a thousand Aussie dollars about 18 months ago. And now that it's came back 18 months later, the scary thing is something like this 18 months later is still pretty much worth the same amount of money as when I sold it all that time ago. And the last thing I've learned from this whole endeavor is that a gaming PC really sells because of the gaming graphics card. As long as the CPU, in this case, it's an i7 that's uh, fairly old, is still able to support the maximum FPS a 1066 gigabyte can put out. So as long as the CPU is fine, you'll still get good money and that gaming PC is still very attractive in the market. But the scary thing about that is in those last 18 months, we really haven't seen any advancements in GPUs, especially in terms of value for money. And in fact, in the last few months, we're seeing value for money with GPUs go the opposite way due to a really high demand due to a certain thing out there at the moment. So it's kind of really weird where in the last few years, we've seen this bizarre seesaw effect between CPUs and GPUs, where a few years ago, we weren't getting any enhancements in the CPU department, but then Ryzen came along and really push the CPU uh, value for money sector through the roof. But at the same time, the GPUs and their value for money just tap it off completely. So I'd kind of like to see that seesaw balance a little bit back. Or of course, we just rocket ship the, the whole seesaw up to a new level. So do hit that like button if you like rocket ships, but also let us know in the comments section below, have you had different experiences to changing thermal paste and what's sort of the most common problem you come into when you are fixing older PCs. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. As always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from v one per, and they ask, what pre-built PC do you think I should buy? E3 1270V2 or an i5 4590? Um, pre-built PC, you haven't said VR there, so I would go with the 1270V2. It's gonna give you four cores, eight threads, versus the i5 4590, which is only gonna have four cores, four threads. In terms of the clock speeds, I believe the 1270V2 should be a little bit faster in its all core clocks too. So that's gonna give you a good advantage there though. The i5 4590 will have official VR support and the AVX2 instruction sets. But if you're just doing normal desktop gaming, you will get a smoother experience on that 1270V2. Hope that answers that question. And if you guys stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, and you wanna see it the moment it drops, do hit that sub button, ring that bell. That was just an email coming in and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.